Jordy and I are out doing some scouting again today. Got a relatively nice day. Still got lots of snow out here and we're having trouble finding roads that are accessible that aren't full of snow or minimal maintenance that are now pure mud. So we found one spot where we can kind of get the truck parked in good. So we're gonna walk this one. Uh, this is kind of a river bottom spot, so it's gonna be different type habitat than we were scouting uh, just last week in our latest video. So it'll be interesting to see what we see. walk in to this one to get back to where we want to go but hopefully we see more deer sign more buck sign on this property than we did earlier this morning so we're coming down to this river and like I mentioned before parking is an issue because of all the snow and how wet it is but this river is not very deep and I thought my boots didn't have holes in them, so I was gonna walk across, throw my boots back across to Brody, who has holes in his boots, so he could put them on and walk across. I got halfway out in water, ran into my boots. So, it's kind of cold out, but it's like 30 degrees. We're doing something kind of stupid, but not really stupid. And so it's not gonna like come way up to here, it's gonna come up to like my knee. So, we're gonna go quick and put our shoes back on. As quick as we can. I mean, the water should be above freezing. Yeah, one would think. Okay, I'm gonna sit down and take my shoes off. And once we get across, we can walk the road. Why don't we just walk the road over the bridge? That would have been, yes. Should we still do that? Oh no, we're here. Okay, we can do it on the way out. We can do it on the way out though. That would have been smarter. That's what smart people would have done. Cold? Oh brother, yeah, that's cold. That's cold. It's not like get your feet out of the water, they instantly warm up. Well, we made it across the river. Uh feet are a little wet, but at least our socks aren't wet and they're gonna get warm. So we're gonna head up into here. We're right at the kind of beginning of where this tree line runs down this river. There's a bunch of tracks coming down, coming out of here. So they're going to eat up this way across the river, but they're bending in here. So once Brody gets all his stuff situated, we'll uh Start heading that way. All right, so we got up in here into this river bottom and this is the stuff we're looking for. So just getting in here, there's already deer tracks. Brody's back that way walking. I'm gonna walk up this way and uh, see what we can see here. Find some buck sign. There's gotta be some deer in here. There's tracks everywhere, so. Hopefully we find a shed or something. That would be really sweet. But with all this snow, it's gonna be hard to do, but. So as we're moving through here, I'm up here, chances down there about 30 yards, and we're just pushing away down the edge of this river here and what we're looking for is deer sign so when we say deer sign and the things we're looking for when we're scouting is we're looking for rubs we're looking for beds looking for tracks so we've already seen some rubs back here but we keep pushing farther in until we get into where there's bedding and we can correlate some of those rubs with bedding so not always do once you see those rubs do you stop right there and that's where you set up you keep pushing a little bit farther and uh, try to correlate those rubs and that deer sign with bedding. So that's what we're doing right now, we're trying to find the bedding and then correlating that sign with the beds and then figuring out setups from there. So that's what we're doing now, just pushing back through here, trying to find the bedding. Some good tracks in here too though. Looks like some bucks are in here, which is good. I mean, that stuff back there looks good where we walk through. I mean, it's better than this morning, but the rubs and stuff were way yeah. down at the end. And then 
most of the deer tracks are coming this way. I mean, there's some big, uh, I call them, I guess, ag fields. They're big food plots, but it's pretty obvious the deer are headed out there. Yeah. So we're trying to show you guys why we're walking through that so quick and not stopping and trying to find a stand location. And it's kind of hard to describe. A lot of it is experience. Um, we used to hunt that sort of stuff in the past and not have that much luck. So that's part of it. The more you hunt areas like that, the more you realize what you can hunt and what's good and what's bad. But another thing that we're seeing as well is the lack of buck beds. Burry City's only saw three in there, or three beds in general. So we want to get to a spot that has a higher population of deer bedding in it, and that just wasn't holding the amount of deer that it should. And also a lot of the tracks are crossing the way we're walking. So they're not running up and down the river, they're crossing coming out of somewhere else. And that's where we're gonna go next, or later on at least, is where they're coming from. So those tracks are telling us that they're not spending time in here, they're just passing through. We don't wanna spend time in the areas that they're just passing through. We wanna be in the spots where they're hanging out the majority of the time. So that's why we're gonna keep walking. So as we're walking here along the river, we found a pretty good spot for an observation set. So what you can do, what we would probably do, is walk down this river. It's super shallow, there's sandbars on both sides, a quick, easy walk, and as we mentioned before, not a lot was bedding along the river. So it's an easy spot to get in and not bump deer out. You can pop right up here in this tree, and those big food plots, ag fields are on the other side of the river. So in late December, September, throughout the year, you can sit there and be able to see all of that over there. And if you get up there, the best part, you can look out over all the CRP cottonwood habitat that's out in front of you where the bucks are more than likely bedded. And again, it gets even better because right here is kind of where the river bends and this natural opening here, all those deer are just gonna funnel out across and go right out into that ag field. So not only are you gonna have a shot at the deer, but you'll be able to see anything out there, which gives you a great way to scout that area without actually having to scout it. So if you see a bunch of deer coming out of those trees over there, now you know you can move over there. So just a great observation stand with almost foolproof access. You can see a bedding and a food source all from one tree. So it might be a good spot for us to come back in, and just hang a stand in this tree, do an observation sit, if once we get out there and scout, we can't pinpoint a better spot. So we've pushed back in here probably another 300 yards just walking straight down this river. The strip of trees down the river is probably only 50 to 100 yards wide at most. And there's some good heavily used trails in there, but there's not a lot of beds. Chance probably found five beds in there. So like we're talking about back there, how the deer weren't necessarily living in there, but they're passing through. Same thing goes for all this that goes down this river. Well, we finally found a spot back in here and there's some big buck tracks right here coming out of this stuff back there and like obviously you can see that back there looks pretty good but we can also sit right here maybe get up in a tree over there or this tree or this one right here and we can see all the crp and that field that's on the other side so it's accomplishing what we were doing down there we're actually in a better spot right here to see this field and this better bedding that's right here we can also if you get up in a tree you might be able to see out there a little bit but better bedding there and we can see more of this field and have better bedding here. So this actually, as we push farther, this might be our observation set instead of back there. That's just kind of things that you adjust as you work your way back in here and you find new stuff. But this spot's pretty good. Seeing some buck tracks, seeing some more deer movement. So good spot. We're going to push farther back in there. I think as we get that way, it could be pretty good. But I like this spot right here in this opening. We're sitting down, taking a little bit of break now. We have a little bit farther to walk. Uh, we found a good spot back there, and me and Brody were talking. It's probably going to be a learning property. It just feels like we're going to have to make some moves. So, I mean, it's definitely a good property. And I think the key today so far for scouting this piece has been to keep pushing. We knew when we first got down the habitat was right. We just weren't seeing, seeing the deer sign that we'd hoped. So it's just a matter of keep going. We knew the habitat was correct when we got down here. Now it's just a matter of pinpointing where the bucks yeah. are coming from. And you can only tell so much too from scouting, especially just kind of how this property sets up. That's why we talked about those observation sets will give us, those will be like our first hunts. We're gonna come in and sit in those two observation sets and see what we see and then make our aggressive moves after that. So, I mean, that's what we're doing is really find a spot for this property that we can get in, see a lot of ground, 
and then make our moves. Yeah, especially on these new ones you've never been on. The key is those observation sits. It still gives us a chance to shoot a deer on the first time in, but also lets us see up and down the river, mm -hmm. lets us see this side of the river, lets us see the big food plot ag fields on the other side. So we're going to gain a lot of information just from sitting that one observation sit, yeah. and then we're going to move from there. It's just a process of getting closer, but the key like with that observation stand is to get as close as you can with that observation stand first so you're not taking so long to step closer to where you need yeah. to be. You're already halfway there when you first start. Yeah. So we're going to get up, keep walking a little bit farther this way, then we're going to go back and check that the cottonwood CRP stuff where we think, I think anyway, there's probably going to be some beds mm -hmm. in there. I hope there is anyway. So yep. we're good up now, just a little bit more along this river, and then we'll get out of here. Find the good stuff, hopefully, that we walked. Maybe we walked by all the good stuff. I hope so. So we're seeing all this sign in here, up here on this, I mean you can kind of call it a food plot or just open grassy area where the deer are walking. You can see a bunch of scrapes or a bunch of rubs on the trees along here, but we know that the deer that are coming here making this sign on this food plot here are coming from back in that way. So if we were hunting, we wouldn't set up on this sign that's here on this field, we go and push farther back into that way. So sometimes you talk about hunting fresh sign or sign that we're going to set up on. This is sign that we're going to use, but we're not going to set up on it and hunt it. So this is an example of some of that sign that we're going to see and take note of, but it's not really sign that we're going to use a whole lot. Not going to set up on it, not really going to use it for anything, just taking note of it that there's deer in the area and we're going to push farther back. So this is sign that we're going to pass over. You guys have probably seen our Ask Whitetail Instinct videos and me and Brody really enjoy answering your guys' specific questions on the things that we're doing or the questions that you guys have in those videos and in our podcast videos and all those different videos that we've come out with. So if you guys have any questions about the scouting you're doing this year or any properties you have questions on, put them in the comments below. Any questions about what we did in this video, put them below. We really enjoy answering your guys' specific questions because there's a lot of stuff that we talk about out here that we think we're explaining good and then you guys still have questions on it because we didn't cover what we needed to cover. So if you have questions about something we skipped over, something we said that you want clarification on, put them in the comments below and we'll answer them in those Ask White Tail Instinct videos because we really enjoy doing that. So if you have any questions over anything, put them in the comments below. back to the road we're walking out um, we've talked about this me and Brody while we were walking out but we really think this is a, a really good spot but it's gonna be a spot that's gonna take some adjustments because we're just not quite sure exactly where the deer are we think we have a pretty good idea but it's gonna be in a kind of an adjustment spot but that's the fun of it it's gonna be a fun uh, place to go I'm actually really excited to hunt it which it was almost September and not just March but gonna be a fun place I hope you guys enjoy following along it was a fun scout hopefully you guys learned something like we said before if you have any questions over anything put them in the comments we'll answer them in the ask white tail instinct videos so thanks for watching make sure to like and subscribe